Hello and welcome to Image Classifier Explained for Beginners. I am Kashif Murtaza, um, instructor at AI Sciences and in this uh, short video we are basically going to see what classification is and particularly how images are classified. So let's dive in and first see what is image classification. So image classification problem um, as a setup is, is the problem looks like the following. So let's say you have an image classification system, sometimes known as the image classifier. Let's say this is the system, image classification system. It takes an image as input, let's say I. It might be an RGB image or a grayscale image. It can have um, any format, any valid format for an image. And this image classification system actually uh, produce one of the predefined set of categories. So let's say, for example, in this particular case, let's say we have all the images um, of uh, all the images that we have, they belong to one of these categories. Let's say airplane is a category, uh, automobile is a category, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, truck. By the way, this data set I'm referring to is a C410 data set for 10 classes. Uh, it's uh, available. Um, it's uh, available in different deep learning frameworks as well, including PyTorch, TensorFlow, and MaxNet. Um, and it's publicly available for image classification. So, given an image, the image classification um, image classification module or the system actually produces one of these um, outputs. So that's uh, how the image classification works. Uh, here I should mention also that uh, what is classification in general? So a classification system, um, also known as uh, super, uh, also known as um, the supervised machine learning framework with discrete labels, um, is the following. It accepts a particular object, um, a particular object in the form of feature vector. Uh, this uh, and, and this. You can now consider, for example, if this is an image which is 10 by 10, um, and let's say it's a grayscale image, a feature vector might be a 100 long vector with all these intensity values just flattened out as a column vector, and that's a feature vector. So a classification system then takes this uh, representation of the object in terms of a feature vector, sometimes also known as a descriptor, um, and it actually produces the corresponding label um, uh, whatever the label um, there is uh, for this particular image. For example, if it um, the, the classification system if it accepts this particular image, it should produce a dog. Um, now the question comes uh, how these classification systems and image classification systems uh, they are built. And, uh, and, and now by the way I'm assuming that um, the viewer knows uh, uh, for, from now on, what's the difference between image classifier and a classifier? Image classifier is a classifier which actually operates on images as a 2D object representation. Um, and uh, a classifier in general can, can work on, for example, the data that is non-image data, for example, text data or some other data, maybe the records of stock market and st stuff like so. And the task of classification is to uh, label label the objects uh, represented in vector form to a predefined to a set of predefined classes. How this uh, classification scheme actually works? So let's dive in and see how classification indeed works um, in in general. Um, image classification pipeline. Uh, I will discuss the classification scheme uh, in the context of image classification as well. In image classification, the first and the foremost step mostly is the feature extraction, which means um, you have an image, given an image, maybe uh, an RGB image, or maybe a plain image, or a grayscale image. You're given an image, and let me draw that in a proper RGB manner. So given an image, you need to convert first the image to a long thin vector um, which is sometimes known as the feature vector. 
there are several uh, feature vectors available. Uh, uh, people come up with like hog histogram of gradients or histogram of oriented gradients. This LBP like uh, local binary patterns and there are several others. I'm just I've just mentioned a few just just a couple of these just to get the context clear. This hog descriptor actually accepts an image and ret returns a vector or a list of real numbers and same the LBP but, but with a different technique the descriptors are different. What feature descriptor and what kind of features they are better for a particular kind of task it may vary from task to task. Maybe for example these hog descriptors they are very good for recognizing persons or classifying persons and later it was discovered that not just persons any objects with a with a good predefined geometry the hog descriptors they work very well. But deciding which kind of features um, we should extract for uh, the classification task that actually is a hyperparameter um, and it may vary from data to data. Um, and if your data is not images um, and then uh, we are assuming for example the data is in the form of text or something else again you have to extract the features that's the uh, each object that you're going to classify if you're going to build a classification system whether it's an image classification system or um, a classification system that does not work on images you have to represent whatever your objects are to be classified in terms of descriptors feature vectors these two descriptors they are specific to images so in in the in the classification pipeline you first have to represent your objects in our case uh, images in in terms of the descriptors or feature vectors the next goal is to come up with a model uh, the classification model here i have mentioned a couple of models for example this sport vector machine is really a great and a very powerful model for classification and a more recent one is a neural network so once we presented our data in terms of feature vectors um, we need to specify a particular model let's say SVM um, which model we are going to select is again hyperparameter like what feature vector what features should we extract and then on top of that what model should we deploy um, these are kind of hyperparameters and it, the choices can choices or the set of choices they can vary from data to data um, and the only techniques to only practical techniques to help figuring out these kind of choices are the validation techniques in machine learning so let's say you have selected a model you have now data and this model actually outputs uh, the class categories now the question is um, how we actually come up with this kind of model and how to train this particular model to actually perform very well on the data how to start how where to start for example so what happens normally is you are given a lot of data in terms of for example images you are given an image let's say image one and its corresponding label let's say horse or dog let's say the the category dog is assigned a code let's say two then you are given another image uh, let's say image two with label one let's say you are given a, given another image let's say image three with label let's say zero and then another image let's say image four with a label let's say five and so on this kind of data is known as the training data and what you really uh, after selecting the model and selecting what kind of features you are going to use for example you will split your data into training and validation set uh, for example let's say I split the data into an 80% data along with the labels and a 20% data along with the labels and I just kept this 20% data just to check the performance of my model and I make this 80% data visible to my model to get trained. Now the model will actually uh, take the description of the first image and its label and actually produce the label and try to actually uh, minimize the dif difference between the actual label and the produced label. If the difference is there, the model will adjust its parameters and will try again and again. <coughs> but be careful that the model actually respects not only one image, actually all the images. Um, so this back and forth kind of, uh, the model will produce a label and then it will see whether it's a correct label or not 
based on this information, the model readjusts its parameters and this back and forth process actually uh, trains the model very well on this particular kind of data and this process is known as training. Then um, this particular data which is not, which was not made visible at the training process to, to the model, uh, on, upon this particular data the performance of the model is judged and that is called the validation data. This is really a hectic job, for example, selecting features, what kind of features should be there, then selecting models, there are a lot of models, what kind of models should be there. A workaround, a more uh, advanced kind of workaround or a modern workaround is convolutional neural networks, in which you don't worry about selecting what kind of features you are doing, actually it learns the features automatically. And depending upon your loss function, you need not to set any kind of classification model, it has a, it has a classification model as well. So um, most of the uh, recent kind of uh, image classification models, they rely on convolutional neural networks, but at the same time to deploy convolutional neural networks, one, one must need uh, very large amounts of training data to actually, uh, to actually meet the needs for the training of convolutional neural networks. Um, for example, uh, recently most of the people, they are working on ImageNet uh, data set which contains um, millions of images and uh, the total number of classes are around um, more than 20,000. And there is an ImageNet challenge that uh, every year people come up with their own models and most of these models that are actually winning uh, from 2014, consistently from 2014 onwards are, are convolutional neural networks and variants of those. So, so in a nutshell, you have a model if you're not using convolutional neural network, then you have to select the model. Um, and before selecting the model, you also have to select the feature extraction phase. And then you move, then you need to move on. So that is feature extraction. That is your model selection. Uh, if you're using convolutional neural network, you all you have to set is the architecture of the convolutional neural network and just feed the images directly. It will learn the best feature with respect to the uh, classification criteria. So uh, let me show you uh, one running code of uh, classification using convolutional neural networks in, in PyTorch. Let me just show you a quick walkthrough over a C410 data set in, in PyTorch. So uh, in PyTorch, these are, let's say, the uh, certain kind of uh, packages that we need from Torch. So let's load these packages. Um, we also set uh, data directly. We are going to work on C410 data sets. So let's set the data directory. If data is already there, it will not download. Otherwise, it will load the data set. Again, we are uh, splitting our data into training and validation. Uh, so we split our data. So yeah. So um, to train the convolutional neural network, um, just we will see shortly, uh, we will be training that in batch mode. So let's fix the batch sizes and just shuffle the inputs both in validation and training just to not bias the sequence. Um, so that's the uh, data. Now um, the, the shape is basically three into 32 into 32. Uh, that's, the, that's the shape of the image. It's a 32 by 32 RGB image. And that's let's say our convolutional model, which is uh, uh, first layer is convolutional layer, then we have a ReLU activation for that, and then we apply um, max pooling. Um, the second layer is again convolutional layer with ReLU activation, and we uh, apply, um, apply a pooling layer as well. Till now, the features will be extracted. Uh, we can have more layers. Uh, we, we might use dropouts for kind of um, regularization and stuff. Uh, and um, that's the architecture. Once we think that the uh, features are, so, so these two layers, they will actually supply the features, and this actually flattens out the features into a long, thin feature descriptor, and then we might have, for example, a dense layer, maybe a couple of dense layers or fully connected layers to actually go through the, um, to actually produce the actual classification model. So let's run this model, yeah. So we have to set the optimizer here. We are, um, set, we are setting the optimizer as stochastic gradient descent with learning rate 0 0.1. Uh, we may set different uh, loss functions. Here we are setting cross entropy. 
And let's say we set the number of epochs to just five and see how it get trains. It will take a couple of minutes. This training process will take uh, a couple of minutes on, on this machine. Maybe we can have a better hardware or maybe, maybe we used to GPU models or clusters or uh, something like that for, um, for a higher speed. But uh, it will actually train on training images and later this code will actually validate the performance of our convolutional neural network on the validation example. So let's wait for uh, its training. It's just a couple of minutes. Let's wait for that and we will come back later. Okay, the training has uh, done just for five epochs. These are the loss uh, values after each epoch. And now we, now our model has been trained. Uh, by the way, you can play with this number of epochs and there are a lot of other things that I'm not actually going into. There are a lot of details to be, uh, to be, um, uh, to be uh, go through. Um, let's check the performance of this model on our validation data in terms of the accuracy. Let's see how the model actually performs on validation data. So the number here is basically uh, 42. So that's the performance of our model on this particular validation data. So again, we can, uh, we can, for example, um, we can, for example, go through and change this model and number of epochs and stuff like so to get a better performance and stuff like so. But that's the overall, um, overall um, kind of pipeline. Uh, here we have in this uh, Python example, we actually deployed a convolutional neural network. So most of the details of feature extraction and classification there actually inside the model. So um, I hope you like this video. Um, please press the like button and uh, subscribe our channel and um, share this video to your friends. Hope to see you next time.